Hey guys, this is Coded Steel, and today in the App Inventor tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the Canvas element, which is a pretty freaking sweet element, if you ask me, and ultra important uh, in the continuing saga of apps that we're going to create. I've used the Canvas a few times. Uh, some of a lot of the apps that we're actually going to create here in the near future are going to use the Canvas element quite a lot. So. Uh, definitely a very important element to have. So we're going to go ahead then and we're going to drag the canvas element in. And the way the canvas element works over here, as you guys can see, you have fonts, lines, widths. I'm not concerned with any of that stuff. All I'm concerned with is this stuff right here, the filling the parent and the filling the height, which I'm going to specify as 350 pixels, which is perfect for my tablet. Might not be for your phone. I don't know uh, because it's such a raw value. It might kind of, it might be a little too big for your phone. Possibly, I can't say for sure. But um, that's what I'm choosing. So it works out pretty sweet on my uh, my tablet, and uh, it comes out pretty well as far as stuff is good uh, for the layout. So we're gonna drag in a horizontal. Did I drag it? horizontal arrangement and then we're going to drag in some buttons so some not new stuff at all very simple straightforward stuff to understand too and we're just going to rename this button clear and then this one I thought I renamed it oh yeah I did but I'm renaming it up there that's it's kind of stupid the way they had that set up anyways um, clear and draw, then the text for the button is going to be uh, draw for that, and then, I don't know, clear for that, something, something along those lines. That looks good. And uh, we're going to make that whole horizontal arrangement, take up the width of the screen, and we're going to center it in the center of the screen. Cool enough. And the last thing we have to do and actually the second to the last thing we do is draw the clock component into this and switch this down to one timer interval right here in the clock properties timer always fires basically that means every time time is up it's like an alarm clock anytime time is up it it rings and it does whatever you you turn it off you react to it well this is a similar thing it's just like whenever the timer fires whenever that inner timing interval is up <laughs> the alarm goes off, and it, it's, it's going to do something. The program, the app is going to do something. So what is it going to do? Well, we haven't we haven't specified that yet. Uh, clear and draw, we know what that stuff does. This is a canvas. Canvases are different than other stuff. Uh, the user layout that we've done so far, we've seen we can't really specify exact pixel locations. You have to tell it center, top, left, right, blah, blah, blah. It can be very limiting when you guys want to create an extremely customized app, it can it can ultimately uh, prevent you from being able to do, you know, placing things exactly where you want to place them. So what do I do when I have that problem? Well, I can. That's where um, this comes in. That's where the random pixel drawer comes in. So how does it work? Well, how it works actually is it goes ahead and it allows you to place balls or images on, on the screen, which that's all you really need to do. A ball is pretty much just a, a, a ball. It's a sphere that bounces around the screen. It's a little black dot that just kind of just does whatever it wants to do. And you guys can see we can pick any location on the screen where we want to place it. And that's the cool thing about the canvas element. We can actually pick locations. Before, with uh, the way the layout was, I actually had to was restricted to center, left, right, top, bottom. I couldn't really, you know, put it wherever I wanted to put it. I was kind of limited. Uh, with this, all those barriers are freaking shattered. They're all destroyed, shattered, broken. Call them whatever you will. This thing redefines the way the app works. So if there's any uh, this, basically what you got to gather out of this is whenever you want to have extreme and precise control over your layout the canvas is what you want to use unfortunately you cannot drag the layout buttons into the canvas uh, that's kind of bogus I think you should be able to but it won't let you so it's kind of what we're restricted to 
Uh, no big deal, though. Uh, we, you can work your way around that by drawing rectangles and whatever else inside of the canvas, which we'll explain here in just a second how to do all. I'll explain here in just a second how to do all that stuff. So, anyways, that's how the canvas works. Uh, sprites, you can import your own images and put them in there and whatever else. So, cool enough. Uh, now on to more important stuff. The logic. How is this program going to work? Well, this is exactly how it's going to work. First of all, we have to do something when the clear button is clicked, and we have to do something when the draw button is clicked. So, And we have to do something when the timer button is, is goes off, and we're also going to draw and drag this in. I'll explain what all the stuff is going to do here for a second. I'm just going to get some stuff prepped. Uh, oh, yeah, in case you guys didn't know, you can actually type what you want here and hit enter and it'll appear just the same as you know whatever I can go ahead and I can type and both these components I needed so I'm not just typing random stuff but I can go ahead and I can just type stuff and it'll pop up which is pretty cool it saves you if you know the command that you need off the top of your head but you have a hard time navigating this stuff and looking for it sometimes it can be kind of nice to just have that ability so uh, we're going to drag that up here to set it to false, and uh, we want to do canvas uh, one dot clear. There it is, cool. And we're going to. So basically, you're just going to have to. You guys are just going to have to follow along. Um, set. Oh, I don't know why that didn't pop up. Okay, whatever. Uh, we'll change this name to D just because <coughs> and uh, and we're going to drag this canvas one dot clear so let me explain what the clear button is doing now canvas one or global D is ultimately going to control when stuff is drawn on the screen and since we're creating a random pixel drawer I don't want it to be able to draw whenever it wants to I want to tell it when it can draw and when it can't draw so I have to give myself the ability to do that, and the way I do that is with this Boolean variable here, and the canvas one dot clear element. So, or and whatever, and other elements that I'm going to specify here in a second. So that's all we need to do for the clear button. The clear button is programmed. This variable is done. This crap is done. You can move it out of the way. Whatever. Okay. Next thing we need to do is we need to do something with the draw element. The draw element is, uh, and, whoa, and first of all, this is going to be false. This one's true. Um, and what's going to happen here is when I click draw, that's when the program is going to draw, not before that happens. So when I tell it to draw, that's when it will draw. So that's what that is um, for. That's all that button is, and that's done. That's programmed, and we can move it out of the way. Uh, next thing we need to do is program this if statement over here. And all we're going to do is we're going to say if this... is true then do something all right and that's going to go under the clock so what do we got to do now well this program is going to draw a random i think i got i don't know if i told you guys but the, what we're doing is we're building a random pixel drawer and it's going to be a random color and it's going to be drawn at a random location so we've got to figure out how to make that happen how do we make a, how do we make a random color and random, uh, and it draw at a random location? Well, believe it or not, and you'll believe it here in just a second. App Inventor actually has a function for random. Pick a random item. No, I want a random number. No, random integer. Beautiful. There we are. Random integer from blah to blah. Uh, I should have made it to where I could, you know, zero, zero, enter, okay, 255. Hey, do you want to work for me, buddy? Okay, there we go. Zero, enter. Zero, enter. Okay, fine. Screw you too, then. All right, control C, control V. And we'll make that zero. Okay. So let me explain this, and then we'll create the uh, other ones here. Okay, so what this is, is we're generating a random integer from 0 to 255. 
Uh, what that does is exactly what I just said. It'll generate a random integer here, random integer here, random integer here, and then it'll ultimately make a color out of those three random integers, whatever they are. So that is important because that's where our random color is going to come from. And ultimately what we have to do for that is we have to go under this canvas one and we have to say set the paint color to that random color and drag that under here. That's This is nice and all now because now we have a random color anytime this, um, any, anytime this function is called. It'll generate a random color, assign it to this, and then that's going to be our paintbrush. But this alone right now will not do anything. We have to give it the ability to draw on the canvas. And in order to draw on the canvas, we need this function right here, the draw point function. And uh, how are we going to draw, or what are we going to do here? We're going to go ahead, okay, what did I do? Control V, V, there we go, beautiful. Um, and then delete that square, I delete that square out, and delete this square out. And plug that in there, and plug that in there. Uh, the app is almost done at this point, but uh, what we need to do now, this canvas one dot draw point will allow you to draw a pixel in a location. Now that location doesn't have to be known to us, and in this case it won't be known to us because the computer or the app, or the, the sorry, the tablet in this case is going to calculate it for us and choose where to place the pixel based on that calculation. We're not going to make any decisions. All we're going to tell it is when you can draw, when you can't draw, and when I'm going to clear you. Uh, that Those are the only three decisions, or the only two decisions really that we're making and the app is going to decide what color and where to draw it all by itself. And how do we do that? Well, we have to specify our upper bound. How do we specify our upper bound right now is the real question because we run into a little bit of a situation right here. Um, with this canvas element, yeah, we know our height, uh, but we don't know our width. I could It could be 250, it could be 300 pixels. I don't want to sit here and and try to figure that out because I don't have a, I don't necessarily know off the top of my head how many pixels across this thing is. Maybe maybe it's like 300 pixels possibly, but I'm not sure. I'm not confident on that. So how do I make it to where I am confident on that and I do know? Well, believe it or not, this thing has a height and a width element. All this does will return the width and the height of the canvas and will restrict this random integer, like we said before, between these two things. So what I was telling you guys before is 0 to 255, when we say that, we mean a number between 0 to 255, completely random, and whatever else. We could literally probably put a very high number in here, but we only have 8-bit color available to us. I'm not going to explain how 8 bits becomes 255. Um, maybe if you guys want to in the future, I'm probably going to do like a logic tutorial. And when I do that at that time, uh, you guys can watch that and, and figure it out from there how, how that actually does work. But uh, for all intents and purposes right now, just trust me and uh, understand that we have 8-bit color. So we only can say between 0 and 255. So that's why I did, that's why that is that, that is what it is. And then canvas.width is because we don't know supposedly the width, and we, we're going to pretend we don't know the height. I could plug 350 in there. It'll be the same either way, but I would like to keep it this way because then the app can tell it what the width and height is, and I'm not making the decision as to what the width and the height is. Let the app do as much of the brute forcing as possible because not only does it save you trouble, trouble, in the long run finding things out but it looks neater when the app is doing all of the stuff because oftentimes when the app does executes a process it's a lot shorter than when we execute a process so that is why it's always a good idea to let the uh, to use whatever functions you have available to you in this piece of software so this app right now as it stands is done right now this app will draw a bunch of random stuff on the screen uh, I have actually pre-created this app because I've actually attempted to record this video I think like two times now and have failed miserably both times. That's what happens when you wait forever to create a video. You get rusty. So uh, we're actually, I think we're doing okay on this one, which is 
is amazing. I can't believe it. Uh, but now we can go to our test, which is what I called this. This is our test app here. Um, and you guys, obviously, this app will work the way it is right now. I can promise you it will. Uh, so there's no worries there. Um, and you guys can go ahead and then download that to your app, and then you can play with it. But this is what it'll do. Um, when I hit draw, it's just going to draw dots in a random location. But uh, wait just a second here. We have a little bit of an issue uh, that we're running into, if you guys can see it here. Uh, we are definitely not drawing 1,000 pixels a second. Uh, if we were, I'm just going to take a guess here because I don't know our width. But I'm going to say it's 300 pixels. There are 105,000 pixels on this screen. Okay? If we were drawing 1,000 pixels a second, it would take us just over a, about two minutes to fill up this entire screen. Now, it's moving fairly, fairly quickly. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But it's definitely not even drawing anywhere close to 1,000 pixels a second. And the reason it's not is because this whole process right here takes longer than a second to execute. While this timer is firing every, every millisecond, every one thousandth of a second, when it fires, we still have to do all of this math and all this stuff. And we're limited ultimately by the speed of the CPU. So the faster the CPU does this, the quicker the thing can react and respond to another clock.timer event. So you got to understand that when you create an app, it's important to try to create it as fast as you can possibly create it, make it to where it will run and execute as fast as you possibly can, because the more things you do or the more processes you do, uh, the slower it's going to be at getting something done. Everything is sequential. When you have one core, which is, I think, what we're limited to with this thing, it is one core, everything in that app is sequential. It has to execute one instruction before it can execute another instruction. That's just the way it works. Nothing's executed in parallel. Um, some stuff might be, like, button clicks might kind of be in parallel. There might be, like, interrupts or something like that. But it might interrupt, you know, the clock or whatever. You might be able to... You can still get that stuff. But you got to understand that we're limited ultimately by the speed of the CPU, and we're limited by the speed that App Inventor can ultimately provide for an app. But... Nonetheless, if you ask me, this thing is pretty freaking sweet, and uh, it's populating the screen rather well. Uh, we can clear it, and then obviously redraw and, and you know have a heyday with it. Uh, it is still drawing really quickly. When I click that button, it draws like almost like a hundred pixels on the screen in a second or something like that. So I mean that's not a thousand pixels, but at least it's like a hundred. So I mean that's pretty good. Maybe not quite 100, but whatever. You guys get what I mean. It is drawing pretty quickly. And uh, another thing to note here is I am not telling it not to print over the same location more than one time in a row. So keep that in mind because sometimes it could be drawing over the top of a previously drawn pixel location. That's not a concern for us here, but... Maybe in the grand scheme of things, or in the long run, uh, we might not want that to happen. So we might would say, uh, store the X and Y locations of every time it's drawn, and then check that. But understand that's more processes being executed, and the more storages you have, the more stuff it's got to check. So do keep that in mind. But uh, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, things are looking pretty awesome here this thing's doing exactly what I want it to do uh, this was your quick crash course on uh, canvas elements as you can see they're relatively simple to understand and uh, hopefully here in our next tutorials next few tutorials uh, maybe not the next tutorial and not the next maybe not the next tutorial after that but uh, probably the third or fourth tutorial from now I want to be creating a web based login app and uh, I think that's going to be pretty freaking sweet. And since uh, you guys have liked some of the login stuff that I've done so far, I think you're going to find that a lot more interesting. Because 
Now, instead of having an app restricted to a login on your phone, you can save it on a server somewhere on the web and pull that information off. You can have multiple users in the same database, multiple users logging onto this app and doing other stuff. So stay tuned for that. I think it's going to be pretty freaking sweet when that does work. And uh, anyways, I think that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. So uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you know, make recommendations for future tutorials or things that you have questions about and you would like to see. And uh, let's just uh, kind of, you know, enjoy the uh, pixel populating that's going here uh, on here on the screen. Uh, which, if you ask me, is still pretty cool. I usually do, uh, most of my programming applications, if you guys look at them, have something where I do something like this. But anyways, I'm rambling at this point. Uh... I will see you guys at your next App Inventor tutorial, and thanks a lot for watching.